Hello everyone, welcome to Dark Fate Tarot. You are joining me on the end of an autumnal day in Brussels. It is bright, um, it has dropped in temperature, but I think this week it's gonna be warm again. It's kind of like, you know, that last summer days that we're having, um, not too hot, but yeah, like the early 20s in Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but warm anyway, um, and sunny and bright, hopefully this week. So welcome to new subscribers. Welcome to, back to everybody who um, is joining me on this channel. I know I have some comments to answer. I just, I, it's been a busy period lately and I'm dealing with a lot, but I do want to keep up with reviews. I am still working through decks, basically about a deck every month. And I want to do a review of the deck that I've been working with for the period of, um, well, over the end of August till end of September over the Virgo season. And that is the Sacred She Tarot. Now, this is a mass market deck. The publisher is, it is Beyond Words Publishing. Um, it is one of the newer decks because I think this is the first time I've, I've kind of like seen this card cardstock that they have. Um, but yes, um, it is Beyond Words Publishing. And the creator is Ma Deva Padma, who is also the creator of the Osho Zen Tarot, which I just have here. Hold on one moment, I'll get it for you. Here it is. Here is the Osho Zen Tarot. Um, and she also has done the Tao Oracle, which I don't have. Um, but this time, uh, Ma Deva Padma is uh, the the writer of the guidebook and the illustrator she's both so very interesting and i'm really excited to share this deck with you so it comes with this magnetic box it's quite quite well done actually it's quite good quality and this is the inside i've already taken it out um, but i just thought i'd show you the inside of the box there you go i'll put this to the side now and then there is another little tuck box that comes inside like this there is a tuck box and this is the deck from the inside of the box. So um, I'm not going to open it all because of the fact that I always damage the tuck box a little bit too much when I when I do that. So I try not to do that on the camera sometimes. Um, but there you go. So you do get a little tuck box as well if you want to carry it just like that. And these are the cards. Now, these are the back of the cards. Absolutely beautiful. It really matches the background here. Um, and we're going to go through the deck. I have put it back in order. And then we're going to have a look at the guidebook and then we're going to look at some pairings. Um, so there we go. Now, I picked this I picked this deck up literally about a week before I started using it. And the real reason was, was it just called to me. Um, it had been on my mind, but I literally had again and again something say to me, work with this deck, especially because of what I'm going through in my personal life and my professional life. It's a huge transition for me. And I really just wanted to, um, yeah, work with it. I, I've seen the deck before in other reviews, other walkthroughs. Um, I found the illustrations to be extremely intriguing. It has some of my favorite cards of all time, I think, is in this deck. And um, it's also exciting to see Mardeva Padma's um, evolution as a creator, going from the Osho Zen to this deck, because the Osho Zen is from the 1990s. I don't know the exact um, time it was printed, but it is from the 1990s. And the Sacred She Tarot, of course, is from 2023. So we're literally looking at this, this creator over what, a 25 year period, which is amazing. So yeah, so let's go through the deck and I'll go through it one by one. This is the cardstock and the cardstock festival is quite buttery. It's, it's not too thick, but it's very, very buttery. It's, it's that matte finish. It's, so it's got a slightly indie style finish to it. And I have to say, I love it. It does shuffle very, very well. And the cardstock is sturdy. So you're not getting anything papery. Um, the majors are in purple and then um, the border indicates the colors for the minors. And we're gonna go through all that as we go through. So here are the majors. And as you can see, she's really, I mean, um, the creators, uh, um, oh, let's make sure it zooms correctly. Her um, ability to just, the art is just stunning. I also think that uh, she has a gift of really 
depicting the keys in a very unique way. Um, so this is kind of like harking towards the medicine wheel, a more Native American uh, symbology, but we're gonna see in here symbology from East and West, which I love. We see pagan mytho um, mythology and symbolism in here. We see Buddhist uh, style. Um, we see kind of like colorings from, that would be more used in, again, uh, the American way of uh, depicting art, so even South America, I think. She's just an absolute genius when it comes to, I mean, look at that, that is again harking back more to, I would say, uh, uh, the Eastern way of showing mandalas. So, and this is of course the Empress, a very interesting depiction again, but that's why I think that um, the creator is just a genius because of her way of being able to draw upon the symbology of different, um, the Hierophant is the Wisdom Keeper here, of different um, uh, backgrounds, different cultures, and yet really showing the essence of the key. That's so clever. Here we have Love, which is for uh, the Lover's Cards. Again, she's uh, changed and tweaked the key words where she wants to, where she thinks it's appropriate. I think that's amazing. I love this. I mean, this is so simple twin flames meeting together, a, a new way of looking at the lover's card, um, turning point for the chariot. And I just want to say, I mean, and you can see here like a rainbow fleece. It's just, again, and the clearing in the woods, the path emerging. Um, I just think, and look at that, she's, she's hugging an alligator. I mean, and by the way, this is not, you know, this is not computer made. This is, this is real art. I just, I think it's amazing. Anyway, so um, nine, we have the solitude, we have the hermit card here, and um, the hermit in this deck is a she. I think that's beautiful how that's been depicted, especially that coat again. Um, but Madhava Padma is just a genius, I think, when it comes to the really taking the symbols and putting her spin on them, um, doing the artwork. Uh, when you look at the depictions as well, she's very, very good at showing not just colors or details, but also um, the folds, like for example, here in the bat and the wing, the folds of, of um, the, the uh, material. Or here, you know, we have here, like she's cushioned and that has this womb-like look, but it also has this flower look. And here we have death. I mean, uh, and this is of course the death card transitioning. Just so cleverly done. Karma is for the temperance. And again, when I remember seeing this card, you can see it here in the camera, those golden hues bouncing off. Now, this is that this artwork is just absolutely stunning. I love this for the devil card repression, especially the face as well. Um, one of my favorite towel cups, I think, of all time. This is Crisis, this is the towel card. Storm in a teacup. So for the non-native English speakers who might not know that phrase, um, it's really about how we might have something happening, like this crisis moment, this reckoning, this end of a feel, end of the world feeling, and it's actually just within a teacup. It's not too bad, you know, it's like perspective. So again, I just think this is so clever the way it's been done. Um, understanding for the star card, again, very cosmic feel. Um, anxiety for the moon moon card and I again we, you know we have the, the the wolves this time howling at the moon we've got this cabin um, here's joy here's our sun card again I just love this council of beings around this child and this joyfulness um, I of course I forgot to mention but it's very clear the diversity in this deck um, this is liberation this is this is our uh, judgment or our awakening card and then finally, this is our world card, which is wisdom. Um, if somebody is a tarot reader here that's watching this, you know, you, you do tarot card readings for others as a professional, um, I think this is an amazing deck. I really, I, I just, I cannot say more because it gives a lot to work with, right? With this eye, with this whale, uh, this this feeling of kind of like, you know, the, the elder watching us. So yes. Um, so here we go, we're into the minors. Now, very interesting in this deck, the minors, we just have the number, we have the color to indicate the suit. So here's the pentacles, the earth suit. They're actually upon the elemental side. Um, this deck, again, is very good at looking at um, abundance, roots, uh, everything to do with that earthy energy. Um, uh, 
here we have be here now for, ba for, for that balancing. So we also have keywords to go with every one of the minor cards, corporation for our three of um, earth. And again, the color is very, very clever how she's done it. Here comes consuming for four. So she, there is a spin on each of the keys and it's up to you if, whether or not you resonate with that spin, but the guidebook will also give a lot to take in. Uh, perseverance for the five of uh, earth, five of coins, and we have a snowy outlook. So again, we're going through different seasons in this deck. Uh, generosity for our six of earth, our giving and receiving, seven of earth, um, that planting the seeds is timing. Um, interesting keywords here. Labor of love for the eight of earth. Beautiful Muriel, urban setting. So again, I really believe this creator is a genius in, I mean, that's Frida Kahlo, by the way, there's an Egyptian, I mean, an Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, we have a Buddhist um, a statue here. We have something that's more of the Japanese style of art here. Um, we have here a, a, a Hindu deity, I think from, because it's very far off, but that's what I'm seeing. Uh, Van Gogh here, um, a Dutch paint. I mean, you can see here, we have here um, Botticelli. This is just an amazing set of artwork. I just, I don't, I don't even know. I could just, yeah, I can just sink into this. Um, here's our nine of earth, our nine of coins, uh, satisfaction. This, this tigress, I mean, just again, very clever. Um, 10 here, privilege uh, for our 10 of earth, uh, her interpretation, and I love here again, the chandelier. Just, and so now we get into the, the, the court cards. The court cards haven't been labeled as courts. They're actually just a continuation of the minors. Of course, they hark though towards our court symbology. So the page of earth here is 11 with honesty and we have these Easter eggs that have been done very, very well. Um, our, pay, our night of earth is explore and we have this, what I think might be uh, native um, uh, American again. And we have here the, or is that a Sherpa? That could be a Sherpa as well. Very interesting. And there's, of course, I think the Himalayas, the Tibetan plateau. So I think that's a Sherpa. Very, very clever. Look at the detail on their um, jacket. And then, of course, we have here support uh, for our Queen of Earth, our Queen of Discs. We have the little bee here, of course, a koala. Just such, such gentleness. And look again at the beauty of the detail in these cards, right? Um, and then finally, we have respect for the king of earth, and he's holding a little chick. And this is very this is very Western pagan to me. So again, I love that Mahadeva Padma really went through what it is to work with the elements across the globe. I mean, that's just so clever. Here is our one suit. So fire number one is inspiration. Our ace of fire. Our two of fire is focus, again, the owl and her collar, just, just beautiful. The way that those owl eyes look at us as well. Three of coins, refresh, and we have the, the, the new birthing through the old, you know, we're, we're starting a new journey, and here we have the crown. Four of fire is dance, so traditionally, of course, in the Rider Waite Smith, it would have been... Um, those four poles and like maypoles and, and dancing and celebration. Uh, five of fire is competition and we have the dragons here looking at each other through the kites. And here is our six of, of fire, which is triumph. Interesting depiction. I again love how much, I mean, and she's done this with the Osho Zen. I mean, Madhava Padma has a signature when it comes to her art and it is very, very clear how much you know, the, the humans are very, very well done here. And, and she plays with those, the softness and then the sharpness of image. Uh, the, her art is just so clever. Adaptability for, for our seven of fire and that fox just really starting to blend in. Um, and our eight of fire is self-confidence, that key that she's diving towards. Uh, nine, uh, resistance, um, our nine of fire. There's just so much going on here. And then our ten, ten of fire with overload and he, he you know, that, that's a he, he's burdened, absolutely. Now a page of fire is self-expression, just stunning, just beautiful. You can just feel 
you can just feel her fieriness and that flame, that, that, that very innocent young flame coming through. Our night of fire with intention. It's a, again, a female body, just beautifully done. An arrow with the rose. Just, there's so much in each depiction, I could just fall into this. And then our 12 of fire with spontaneity. Sorry, let me just move that bit. Sorry, our, our queen of fire. Yes. A bit. And then the mask coming off. Just again, the leopard. Just so much. She's pregnant here. And then here comes our king of fire with integrity. And this time a king depicted with a child. Absolutely beautiful. It looks like the child has beads in her hair, but also a cosmos. Again, just, I love this. This is just so, so awesome. <sighs> yeah. Okay, so here comes our sword or our air suit. Ace is with clarity, the diamond. Two of swords with restraint. Our three of swords with heartbreak. Again, you can see here this rain, which feels more like also a razor or some kind of a grill. Oh, just beautiful. Four of swords with rest and that butterfly. I just, yeah, feel like I'm at the beach. Five of air with our arrogance and those pearls. And yeah, again, a muriel. And then our six of air with departure. And the bird. Now seven of air, seven of swords of deception. Lamb, that deadened face and that wolf coming through. Very cool. Here's our eight of air with blame and that sword energy again, and she's trapped. Our nine of air with fear. And then our 10 of air with grief, the sadness. Okay, our page of air, scrutiny, very clever again. Again, the art. I mean, just look at that. Our knight of air with determination. Our queen of air with perfection. Again, these numbers, you can also use the numerology, right? Perfection with our queen. And here's our king of air with power. So we're at the last suit, which is the cups. Ace of cups with flow. Beautifully done. Two of cups with union. Oh, just stunning. There's so much in here. And then the cup shape coming out from the rainbow. Oh, just... Uh, three of cups with harmony. Oh, beautiful. That play, that dolphin play. Four of cups with frozen. Five of cups with disappointment. Oh, that's so stunning. And yet there's this, there's this lotus growing, right? Six of cups with passion. I don't think that's a lotus, sorry. I think that's another. I've forgotten now flower. Six of cups with passion, harking towards the Thoth theme. Now I love this. This is another favorite card of mine. Here's seven of cups. And just, I love this seven cups. Must be one of my favorite seven cups. We've got Mickey Mouse hat. <laughs> Our eight of cups <laughs> with uh, separation. Beautiful. Nine of cups with indulgence. And our Ten of Cups with Gratitude. Here comes our Eleven, our Page of Cups with Imagination. Look at that beautiful robe. And then the ship. Our Knight of Cups with Voyager. Oh, the Romantic. Our Queen of Cups, Intuition. Oh, beautiful Queen of Cups, stunning. And then finally, our King of Cups as Dreamweaver. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a quick shuffle and then I'm just gonna show a couple of pairings. I'm afraid I can already feel my energy levels are starting to drop, so I am in a little bit of a struggling stage. So I'm just gonna show a few quick pairings and then I think I'm gonna to have to sign off. I'm sorry about that. Um, and I do need to do it all in one take because of the editing issue, so that's why. So I'm gonna just try to shuffle this as best as I can. So we have some some differences. Okay, let's start off here with the Five of Cups. So one of the, um, so one of the things I want to talk about with this deck is I think it's just brilliant in terms of its creativity, 
abundance. It also has a lot of ecological themes, shadow work, the mind, community. Here it is with Wisdom of the Divine Feminine. This is an oracle deck. It's an indie oracle deck. It's by um, Jenny Han and Jessica Rachetti. And we're just going to have a look at a few of the pairings. Look at that beautiful embodiment. Oh, look at that six passion with compassion. Oh, competition with discernment. This is already, you can see how beautifully they go together and triumph with expression. So that's with the wisdom of uh, the divine feminine. And I also have its twin deck here, which is wisdom of the shadow, also by the same creators. And again, you're going to see how well these work together. Here we have emotion, here we have self-confidence. Wow, look at that. Tenderness with resistance victory with power. So I'm, I'm going to stop there to keep it brief, but you can already see how beautifully they work together. And then I also used it with Divine Abundance. Now this is by Tosha Silva, art by Fena Gonzalez. This is a Hay House mass market deck. Okay. Here we have Karma. And here we have Harmony. Look at that. Beautifully done. Letting go with wisdom and there's Shiva. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Expansiveness with perseverance and signs with solitude. Isn't that a beautiful pairing? So that's with divine abundance. And I also used it with divine beloved, also by Tosha Silva, this time illustrations by Lasha Mutual or mutual, sorry. Okay, so here we have generosity, one of the Taras, and satisfaction, wow. I am abundant love, look at that. Respect with mystery, I rest in the unknown. And gratitude with beauty. So I'm just showing you a few so you get a flavor, but again, just beautiful pairings. I absolutely loved that. So. To wrap it up quickly, I'm just going to do a reading. My energy levels are dropping, so you're going to have to just bear with me. And we're going to look at choices, one of my favorite cards, and seven of cups, seven of water. And here we go. Let's look at choices. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, they're at the back here, the waters. Ah, so we get here. Let's do that. So we get here why this has been used. I'm gonna read just a bit of it. A hat is put on, taken off. Who is the one that chooses it? Watch children playing dress up. The characters they invent, the creativity they bring to it. Cowboys, queens, witches, and silly clowns are all welcomed in the game and unburdened by fixed rules of right or wrong. Each child brings the individuality to the role. Innocent authenticity shines through, regardless of the costume worn. The hats in this image symbolize the characters we create over the course of our lives. Changeable, spontaneous. We're free to construct anew, given the circumstances. In India, this play is called Leela, a philosophical approach that sees everyone, regardless of age or stature, as a child playing at life. Consider the hats you wear while going about the business of being you. How many roles do you act out, believing they are real? Which have been with you since childhood and which do you continue to modify or embellish? Do you have any favorites? Reflect on the roles you've played, your success and failures according to the situation at the time. Stop worrying about making mistakes and come back to the one who's wearing the hat. Life is an invitation to experience the merry-go-round world while staying in touch with yourself. It is in this interplay of inner and outer that we come to understand what know thyself really means. And then in italics it says, and even bone deep gifts nature confers, art, music, math, will, if embraced with passion, lead us deeper to where we find we're equal participants in the whole interconnected festival of life. Inward is key. If we go deep enough past the sheer singing veil, consciousness lives in a silence like starshine. So that is the writing of this creator, 
who I think is a genius. And the back it says, come with me, you are me. We cannot, sep we cannot, uh, we cannot, we cannot separate it be. Wow. This journey is both yours and mine. May we rise and soar outside of time. With every breath that we are taking, so goes the world that is our making. Just, I, I mean, Mardeva Padma for me is a genius. This has been really one of my favorite decks, I think, to work with. And I look forward to, you know, working with it in the future for sure. I just, I think I'm going to come back to this deck. But thank you for joining me. I'm going to stop there. And I hope you enjoyed looking at this deck too. I strongly encourage it. It's a mass market deck. It is fantastic for anyone that wants to see a marriage of East and West, where you want to see the natural world, but also the modern world, where you want to intermingle with Western paganism and Eastern philosophy of thought, where the illustrations give you kind of like um, everyday settings all the way to the natural world again and, uh, and working with our elements. Um, the, thought, the text is well thought through, it's balanced, there's an infusion, it looks at separation, it is so steeped in that philosophy of what I would see as Buddhism but also Western paganism and where there might be some interconnectedness. It really is a soul's journey. This is a powerhouse deck and I can't believe it is mass market. Um, it really is the soul's journey. So I would really encourage that if you have an inkling of wanting to try it, I would definitely suggest it. So until then, thank you so much. Thank you, Mardeva Padma, for introducing me to your creation because I love it. And I hope you give it a try too. I will see you all soon. Take care now.